Hi guys, it's Mrs. Heath. We are continuing our read aloud of our chapter book, Flat Stanley. Hopefully you have been reading this with me. Today we are on chapter three and it's called Stanley and the Kite. Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park, but it was difficult when they were crossing streets or moving about in crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled about from his side, and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. It got easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel, and he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to. It made him mad. On Sunday afternoon in the street, they met Ralph Jones. There's Stanley all rolled up with Dad, going on a walk. So they met Ralph Jones, which was an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you've bought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose. Wallpaper, said Mr. Lambchop. Oh, no, this is my son, Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do, Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young feller, the man said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop, that boy is flat. Smart, too, said Mr. Lambchop. Stanley is the third from the top of his class at school. Fooey, said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said. And they are saying hello. And he will apologize for his rudeness. Arthur could only blush and apologize. Mr. Labchap rolled Stanley up again and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on their way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on top of him. Those are really big books. Put some more on me, Arthur said. Look, he's pretty mad walking in the rain. That's Arthur. So Arthur's piling books on top of himself. There he is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Put some more on top of me, Arthur said when he saw them. Don't just stand there. Help me. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop sent him back to bed, but the next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother, after all. The next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny, but windy, too, and many older boys were flying beautiful, enormous kites with long tails made in all colors of the rainbow. Arthur sighed. Ah, oh, someday, he said. I will have a big kite, and I will win a kite flying contest and be famous. There he is with all the books. Like everyone else, nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents said. He went to the boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. You can fly me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. He ran lightly across the grass sideways to get up speed, and then he turned to meet the breeze. Up, up, up went Stanley, being a kite. He knew just how to manage in the gusts of wind. He faced full into the wind if he wanted to rise or go up and let it take him from behind when he wanted to speed. He had, he had only to turn his thin edge on the wind carefully a little at a time so that it did not hold him. There he is as a kite. And then he would slip gracefully down toward the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high above the trees, a beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch. Stanley swooped right then left in long match swoops. He held his arms by his side and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and then curved up towards the sun. He side slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and stars. Nobody has ever flown that way. Stanley Lambchop flew that day. Probably no one will ever fly that way again. 
After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching, and Arthur got tired of running around with the, f with the empty spool. Stanley went right on, though, showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left with the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He did not notice while he was eating the hot dog that the wind was blowing the string. There he is eating his hot dog. So picture Stanley flying all over the air, zooming up and down and swirling in a figure eight. I wonder if you can make your body fly like that, pretending you're a kite like Stanley. So he noticed he, while he was eating his hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and tangling it around the tree. The string got shorter and shorter, but Stanley did not realize how low he was until leaves brushed his feet. And then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. Fifteen minutes passed before Arthur and the other boy heard, boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening, and at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologized, he was still cross, which means upset or mad. Alone with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lambchop sighed and shook her head. Oh, you're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realize what I go through with these boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Please be patient, dear. Poor Stanley stuck in the tree. Look at the squirrel looking at him. And that's the end of chapter three. We're moving on to chapter four, The Museum Thieves. Watch my read aloud for chapter four.